Hello, everyone. I'm quite uh, nervous because I see that like over nearly 200 people on the call. So uh, <laughs> I hope as well that the demo is going to launch and, and run. So anyways, my name is Tomasz Poszdek uh, from Warsaw, Poland. I'm Business Applications MVP. Um, and I'm basically working with processes workflows for, for years already. And um, recently, customer asked me to well, create another automation, this time using RPA. And over time, I learned that uh, the website that we were meant to automate was equipped with uh, reCAPTCHA, with Google reCAPTCHA because of the security reasons. And basically, uh, well, you are, as, as, as myself, internet user, so possibly you faced uh, reCAPTCHA in various places. Basically, this is a technology that is being used to secure every place that um, is used to input data from user to the website that you're browsing, like signing in, posting comments, uh, posting a reply in, in a forum, or other cases where you need to put some data into the form and send it to the server. Basically, uh, the goal is to avoid bots from sending hundreds of requests at a second. So. Uh, or just to uh, limit bots from, from acting as users and writing data on behalf of users, like some fake comments uh, on their blog posts and so on. And nevertheless, uh, the goal is that uh, when you open a site, uh, it basically displays like a small checkbox. You have to click it. And um, if you do not sign in often to the same website from the same machine, then possibly you will never see that challenge thing. So challenge is... Uh, what you will see in a moment, uh, this, this screen where you have to pick or select uh, images that are uh, corresponding or containing content that uh, the challenge is asking for, like palm trees, cars, bikes, whatever. Uh, so for us users, I mean, people, it's not really complicated. You just select like three, four tiles and that's it. For bots, it's well quite impossible because first, this is in iframe, and secondly, uh, this is just like one image uh, with an overlay on it. So I was thinking about maybe using some cognitive services and image recognition to be able to somehow split these tiles which are containing a specific keyword or a specific item. But I failed so far. I, I wasn't able to make it. So I thought about a different uh, solution that I'm going to present to you right now. The point is that RPA, so the robotic process automation, in this case, is running in unattended mode. So somewhere on a virtual machine in Azure where there is no employee, no person who is supervising that run. And so if that capture challenge is displayed, the bot is simply helpless and cannot proceed. So if that was an attended mode, then simply bot could display um, a dialog window asking user, hey, can you just come over here and resolve this capture and then press OK to continue. However, when this is running in unattended mode, then well, obviously, there is no, no person on site. So the idea is that uh, the bot is making a print screen, sending a request to a user to their email using actual messages. So um, the technology that Tim mentioned uh, just moments ago, but this time it is being sent to your Outlook, to the employees Outlook, not to Teams or, uh, or other places. And then a uh, user is able directly from Outlook to select these tiles which contain that specific item. So. Uh, let me just show you how it works. Uh, fingers crossed it's going to work because uh, I'm just experiencing some issues with my computer for a longer while. Anyways, um, I just need to press run. And uh, this demo is simply going to open one of those hundreds of websites which does contain uh, CAPTCHA to be resolved. And uh, yeah, so now it's running. Hopefully in a moment, uh, a website will pop up with the contents and uh, the bot is going to be then able to resolve it. Right, so there is a website. Uh, now bot should select this uh, ch checkbox, right? So you can see uh, right now this challenge has popped up. And what is going to happen right now is that the bot is calling an endpoint built in Cloudflow, which is actually constructing, composing, and sending me an email with this actual message. So this is an email. It contains a screenshot that shows me uh, that specific challenge and asking me to select these tiles and a layout, which corresponds to, well, this one uh, image. So here I need to select bicycle. I would select as well these two tiles because they cover the whole image, right? So right now uh, I have selected, the response has been sent back to the server and the bot is now able to uh, resolve them. However, because I was experimenting a couple of, a couple of uh, times, Therefore, it's not only to 
I mean, the, the challenge is now getting more complex. So bot has to send another request to myself with another uh, screenshot uh, asking again for help because the challenge is not yet over. So there is a new email uh, with a new request. So again, I have to select now the bicycle. Um, it's somehow I contain these four tiles. Sorry, these four tiles. And again, hit to resolve. All right. Um, so hopefully this time it will be enough, right? So now the bot was able to actually resolve the challenge and post the comment successfully. The goal or, or maybe the challenge behind the simple fact it's just challenging for the bot is the fact that uh, a user has only like three minutes to resolve this challenge. So again, the more attempts uh, are being made to resolve that challenge, the more complex it's getting. So for example, uh, it doesn't contain the image or the object uh, in the image that is being requested for, or that it asks two or three times to resolve um, another challenges, or that simply it like replaces one images with others. And again, asking you to again select the same object in, in that uh, challenge and therefore uh, this solution I was trying to build has to really be proactive and be able to resolve or react to every of these scenarios and so the idea here was that it's simply trying to like up to five times to ask user to help if user is not able to uh, for example answer to an email in these three attempts then the time simply expires. So five attempts uh, sent in around like 20 seconds or it was 30 seconds. No, sorry, 20 seconds. Yeah, or even 10 seconds, whatever, uh, was something that uh, was like fulfilling this uh, time span expected, this, this window, time window expected uh, to react and to resolve the challenge. And so if this is not possible, then uh, at the end, bot is simply sending a message to the user. OK, so you failed. Uh, to resolve the challenge to email. So right now you need to sign into this virtual machine and resolve the challenge yourself uh, that way. Right, so <laughs> uh, one thing, because um, uh, I don't I don't know if I have enough time to really go into details like how it was built. Uh, yeah, you've got, we've got some extra time, Thomas, if you'd like to, right. uh, to show that. Right, so let me show you maybe I don't know which piece of the solution is most, in, most interesting for you. I guess that adaptive cards. So um, I won't get into details about the bot. The bot's, the bot's behavior is quite simple. It's simply scrapping the website. Uh, the, I, the, the recapture challenge is displayed as an iframe. So the bot simply needs to find coordinates of um, the X and Y's width and height of that uh, recapture um, image. And then once user selects specific uh, checkboxes in adaptive card, then the bot is simply calculating what is the X and Y for these specific tiles and simply clicking uh, there. So that's quite simple. And the cloud solution is actually built out of uh, like two, two workflows. So the first one uh, is the one that is used to request user to uh, that is used to request user to uh, resolve the capture. And the second one is used to handle that uh, response from the adaptive card. Right. So this is still using the old technology, not the one that uh, the team mentioned. So it's not using a bot underneath. It's just using the um, Outlook developer <laughs> provider ID. Um, so the thing that you can actually do it yourself once you navigate to uh, Outlook connectors. I mean, did that that URL that I'm just typing. So it's outlook.office.com slash connectors uh, slash I am published. So here you can you can register a new provider, and with registering this new provider, you need to um, specify as well what is the scope of that submission. So at any time you can use your test submission. So this will be um, this will allow you to send adaptive cards or actionable messages to your inbox, uh, or you can use organization as I did in my case. So I'm able to send these adaptive cards to anyone within the tenant. Or you can as well request for the global one, but the global one requires Microsoft approval, not only your um, Exchange admin. So anyways, uh, this is this uh, Cloudflow, which is being called from RPA. Uh, it's using HTTP request to call it. Um, then it's waiting like five times until the screenshot is uploaded to OneDrive and synced. Then it's registering as well information in, uh, in uh, sorry, in Dataverse, because every recapture challenge has its own record in Dataverse, so that um, those Two Cloudflows are able to track what is this request for. So this one is writing the request and sending them details about that request uh, through actionable message um, to the other flow. And then 
uh, depending uh, on what was the layout, so three or four on four, it is simply uh, building a different Active Card uh, layout or the content. So one contains three checkboxes, I mean three on three, the other one four on four. And uh, here is this originator. So that's that's this uh, that's the um, provider ID that you have to obtain to be able to send actionable messages to Outlook. So without this originator, uh, you won't be able to send adaptive card to Outlook. And lastly, uh, before it sends the adaptive card, it uh, concatenates or wraps that uh, content, that JSON in script type uh, application adaptive card plus JSON and sends uh, that uh, email. And then actually uh, the workflow, this main workflow uh, is waiting up to 90 seconds for the response from the user. So if user fails to respond in 90 seconds, then simply uh, the workflow is going to uh, send a response to, uh, where was it uh, here? It's going to send the response to the RPA that, sorry, user failed to respond in 90 seconds. So RPA isn't going to make another attempt. Uh, otherwise, it's going to send a correct response that uh, this information has been obtained. So it simply sends the um, uh, data, like which checkboxes were selected. And it knows which checkboxes were selected because, as said, it is checking that Dataverse row it has created in the first step that is being updated by the second flow that handles the response from this adaptive card in Outlook and is simply writing um, here like which uh, checkboxes have been selected uh, for, that, for that specific case. So that is the whole solution. And so far it's working quite well. <laughs> so users are able to uh, resolve the CAPTCHA without actually need to go and sign into the remote machine. It doesn't happen every day, but at least once a week I have, or I see that there is an email sent with, uh, with a CAPTCHA challenge. So that has anyone from business has to help uh, bot to proceed. So that's basically it. Awesome, Thomas. That's really, really cool. I, I think everybody loathes having to remember those credentials for logging into a remote box or something like that and, and go take care of something. So that's really, really cool the way you've set that up. Uh, thank you very much I, for sharing and, and going into depth. I, I think I shouldn't be sharing that because Google might be really angry that there is a way to crack their captcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're still doing it right. You're just you're just doing it in a more efficient or effective way. So excellent, very good, very right. good. All right, yeah. thank you so much.